Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture of design and analysis of algorithms. In our previous lectures, we discussed a lot about the substitution method. We solved a couple of problems based on the substitution method as well. Now we are in this lecture. The name of this lecture is Towers of Hanoi Introduction. In this lecture, I will introduce the Towers of Hanoi problem, or we can say the Towers of Hanoi. puzzle before starting this lecture i would like to mention that this is just the introduction lecture in this lecture i will only introduce the problem later i will cover additional concepts based on the towers of hanoi so there will be multiple lectures based on the towers of hanoi problem not only this we will learn to write the recurrence relation of moves of towers of hanoi we will learn to write that recurrence relation but we will also learn how to solve that recurrence relation using the substitution method so let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics of this lecture the first topic is introduction to towers of hanoi i will first introduce towers of hanoi to you then we will move to the next topic where we will discuss some examples based on the towers of hanoi to cement the concepts we learn let's start with the first topic introduction to towers of hanoi now what exactly towers of hanoi is it is a classic puzzle in mathematics and computer science it is one of the most popular puzzles of all time and we will also learn how to solve this puzzle in this lecture and a subsequent lectures i would also like to mention how towers of hanoi got its name towers of hanoi is named after a myth about an ancient temple in hanoi which is situated in vietnam hanoi is the capital city of vietnam there is an ancient temple in hanoi where there is the myth associated with the towers of hanoi problem now what's that myth It's a belief that the priests of the temple are working on a set of sixty-four golden discs stacked on one out of three pegs, or what we call towers. So there are three pegs or three towers. We can name them like this: A, B, and C. Out of these three pegs, there is one peg which has. all the 64 discs placed like this in this example i have shown only 5 discs but there are 64 discs in total the goal is to move all these discs from one peg to another peg let us suppose the problem is to shift all these discs from peg a to peg b when i say peg i mean tower now there are some rules that need to be followed we are not allowed to move multiple disks at a time we can only shift or move one disk at a time from one peg to the other peg also we cannot place a larger disk above the smaller disk the placement of disks should be like this only our job is to shift these disks in the same order from a to let's say peg b and we can consider c as the intermediate we can use this tower as well now the myth goes that when the priests complete the task the world will end now that's interesting there are only 64 discs and they all are placed in one peg and the job is to move all the 64 discs from one peg to the other peg we can also use one intermediate peg but this will take millions of years to do this is the myth but i would like to mention this that this myth is indeed true it will take millions of years to finish this task you might be thinking how is that possible there are only 64 discs but if you follow the rules and if you want to shift all the 64 discs from one peg to the other it will take millions of years and to that point the world will come to an end now let's shift these towers over here and let me state the rules which i have stated again 
Here are the rules. Number one rule is only one disc can move at a time. This is important. We are not allowed to move multiple discs at a time. We can only move one disc at a time. Rule number two is each move consists of taking the top disc from one of the stacks and placing it on top of another stack or an empty tower. So one move is equal to one disc move. Rule number three is no disc can be placed on top of a smaller disc. Just keep this in mind. You cannot place the larger disc above the smaller disc. Simple. These are the rules that need to be followed to shift or transfer the discs from one peg to another. Now, as we have understood the rules, we know what is Towers of Hanoi and how it got its name. Let's move to the next topic where we will discuss some examples based on the Towers of Hanoi problem. Example number one is n equal to one. This means we are considering only one disc. These are the three towers we have, and we have only one disc in tower A. This is the initial state. Now our goal is to shift this disc from tower A to tower B. Now you might be thinking, why not from tower A to tower C? You can choose any tower. It is up to you. But I am choosing tower B. Shifting this disc from tower A to tower B is not that difficult. We just need to move this disc from this place to this place and we are all done. It will just take one move to shift this disc from peg A to peg B or tower A to tower B. We can observe the number of disc moves is just one and the move is from A to B. Please note that we are only interested in the number of disc moves as it will help us calculate how much time it will take to finish the task of shifting the 64 discs from tower A to tower B. Not only 64 discs, but any number of discs. If we want to calculate this, we need to know the number of disc moves. If let's say one disc move takes one second of time, then it is clear that this disc move will take one second of time. In this way, we can calculate the time. I hope it is clear. Now let's move to the second example. This time we have n as 2. This means there are two disks in tower A. Now our job is to move these disks from tower A to tower B or peg A to peg B. Let's do this now. How are we going to shift these disks from peg A to peg B? We can use this tower C as the intermediate to shift these disks from peg A to peg B. How? We can shift the topmost disk from peg A to peg C first. Then we can shift the bottommost disk from peg A to peg B. And then this topmost disk from peg C to peg B. In this way, we will have the correct order in which these disks should be placed. Why can't we shift this disk from tower A to tower B? We can, but the problem is that the next disc should be placed at the bottommost place of tower B. But right now, we have this blue disc at the bottommost place. And we cannot place this larger disc above this smaller disc. As this is the violation of the rule, we should not shift this disc from tower A to tower B. First, we need to shift this from tower A to tower C. Now we can see, only one move is needed to shift this disc from tower A to tower C. Now what about this disc? We can easily shift this disc from tower A to tower B like this. This will take one move. Up to this point, we are done with two moves. Now we can easily shift this disc from tower C to tower B. Let's do this now. This will take one more move. So there are a total of three moves. This is what we can say. First from A to C, then from A to B, then from C to B. 
So in this way, we can calculate the number of disc moves. Now let's move to example number 3. This time we have 3 discs. We can observe we have 3 towers and we have 3 discs. Now job is to shift these discs in the same order from tower A to tower B. We already know the process of shifting 2 discs from one tower to another tower using an intermediate tower. In the same way, we can shift these two discs, the topmost discs, from tower A to tower C. In the last example, we considered two discs and we learned it will take three moves to shift two discs from one tower to another considering an intermediate tower as well. As our goal is to shift these two discs from tower A to tower C, we can use tower B as the intermediate. So this is what we are going to do now. Let's shift these discs from tower A to tower C. And why are we shifting these two discs from tower A to tower C? The reason is simple. We want this largest disc to be placed at the bottom most place of the tower B and therefore we want tower B to be empty. So we can easily shift this disc from tower A to tower B. That's why we were shifting the topmost discs from tower A to tower C. I hope this idea is clear. And this shift will take 3 moves in total. This is what we learned in the last example. Now what's the next step? We can now shift this disc from tower A to tower B. Let's do this now. Now we have this disc placed at the bottom most place of the tower B and that's what we want. This will take just one move as we just have one disc. Now we need to shift these discs from tower C to tower B. How are we going to do this? We'll follow the same process. As the goal is to shift these two discs from tower C to tower B, we can use A as the intermediate tower. So now let's do this. This will take 3 moves to shift these two discs from tower C to tower B. This is what we can observe. So in this way, the total number of moves will be 7. A to C, A to B and then C to B. Now maybe it is possible that for some of you, it might not be clear how the shift can be performed from A to C. That is, how we can shift the topmost discs from A to C. Consider this initial state once again. We have these two discs at the topmost position. We want to shift these two discs from tower A to tower C. And it is simple. We can use B as the intermediate tower. First, we can shift this yellow disc from tower A to tower B. This will take one move. Then we can shift this blue disc from tower A to tower C. And finally, we can shift this yellow disc from tower B to tower C. So the moves are A to B, then A to C, and then B to C. A to B, A to C, then B to C. So in this way, we will have these two discs in tower C. Now we can easily shift this disc from tower A to tower B. That is what I have written here. After this, we need to shift these two discs from tower C to tower B. How can we do this? We can use A as the intermediate. We can shift this topmost disc, this yellow disc, from C to A. Then we can shift this blue disc from C to B. And then this yellow disc from A to B. So these are the moves. C to A, C to B and then A to B. In this way, we will have the final state which we want. Now you can count the number of moves. A to B, A to C, C to B, three moves. A to B, one move. C to A, C to B, A to B, three moves. The total number of moves is clearly seven. So for n equal to three, there are seven moves. In this way, we can continue and place more discs in the tower A and we can check how many moves it will take to solve the problem. So, we are done with all the examples of the towers of Hanoi and we will learn from the examples 
how to solve the towers of hanoi problem and how many disk moves are needed to solve the problem this is the introduction lecture we just got the notion of towers of hanoi in the subsequent lectures we will learn how to solve this problem mathematically using the substitution method we will first learn how to write the recurrence relation of disk moves then we will learn how to solve the recurrence relation using the substitution method so with this i hope it is clear how the towers of hanoi looks like so thank you so much for watching this lecture i'll see you in the next one